Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, coming from stage two of the Tour of Britain in Clitheroe Town Centre. Do you all remember what to say? Yeah. Okay, right. One, two, three. Well, I'm not sure that one's ever going to be beaten, although you can try with the hashtag WelcomeGCN. In this week's show, we settle three of the biggest debates in cycling. Is it too expensive? Who is the best all-rounder? And who's got the biggest guns? We've got the answers. Yeah, plus we've got the latest action from the world and here at the Tour of Britain, plus our usuals, comment, caption and tweet of the week. It's going to be a good show, mate. Should be good. What are we going on here for? Because it's the bus. Which bus? It's the, my old bus, which, Cervelo, which the Cervelo one? Test Team bus, this is the it. The Cervelo Test Team this bus? This is it, it's Victoria oh, now, but yeah, come on in. Uh, morning, darling. Um, um, is Matt around? Where's Matt? That was my seat when uh, no one else wanted to use it. It's a great seat, mate, you, uh, you did well. I can see why you chose uh, red as the colour of the GCN sofa. Yeah. You must feel quite at home. Yeah. Anyway, is cycling too expensive? No. And we can prove it. Well, not technically us, uh, but if you cast your minds back to GCN show episode 121, 25,550 pounds, the cost of amateur bike racing written by a keen amateur cyclist. Yeah. I'm sure you remember that very well. Yeah. We had a big debate actually about whether cycling is too expensive or not. Now the debate was actually sparked by a journalist called Andrew Crutchlow. He had a long hiatus from the sport and came back to it and was very surprised at just how expensive it was going to be to race for a whole season. He reckoned that one season was going to cost him £26,000. Yeah, now we reckoned that was well, essentially a load of rubbish, but unfortunately none of us was willing to actually go to the effort of making a comeback in order to prove him wrong. However, somebody has kindly gone and done it for us. Richard Bussell has just won the British National 10 Mile Time Trial Championships. Now that is a big deal over here. Last year's winner was Bradley Wiggins and then before that we've had Alex Dowsett as well. But the main thing is that Bussell did it on a bike costing just £1,000. Yeah, pretty incredible really. Now you'd think that the time trial discipline was the one part of cycling where you could throw a load of money at it and get that extra performance benefit. But through eBay and also the use of cycling forums, he was able to put his bike together for that amazing cost. Now it has to be said though that he did have a slightly unfair advantage and that his coach is Xavier Disley. Now you might remember he was the person who made us sound like we knew what we were talking about during the world hour record attempts earlier this season. So he did have some relatively expensive consultancy, but we spoke to Xavier and he said it was nowhere near what some of his other clients would have spent and it would have been far less than £1,000. I tell you what though, looking at those photos, I'm not entirely sure who thought those socks no, were a good idea. You could have saved some more money there. Yeah, maybe that's something to debate on next week's GCN show. Uh, but I did actually contact Andrew Critchlow. Oh yeah? Yeah, he said, first of all, uh, that he should have saved his money. Um, but seriously though, uh, he was actually a really good sport about it. And he, he did say on Twitter that uh, he felt that while some people might spend loads of money on cycling kit and other people might not spend very much at all, essentially, we all love doing the same thing, which is riding bikes. Yeah, so, very true. Yeah, I think that is a very good point. I also contacted him. He said he's got a lot of equipment, roughly £26,000 worth, for sale at a bargain price. <laughs> Caption competition time now, and you remember last week's photo was this one of Matt Stevens admiring Ian Boswell's underwear. I think the, the exact words were fingering Ian Boswell's underwear. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was Not good Matt's one. words, but um, they were. Anyway, we do have a winner, and that winner is Mr. Kane. He said, Rafa boxer shorts provide brief marginal gains. Very good, good indeed. Very uh, get good. in contact with us in the usual ways, so either on Facebook or send us a message on YouTube and with your address we shall send you out some GCN swag. Yeah, now this week's photograph is of Julien Simon on the finish line of the Vuelta España with his top off. Dan, do you want to? Yeah, I, I, hope, uh, I hope Real Stevens is not here with, uh, with his tape measure because small. For a minute now, I actually believed that you were genius. Simon. That was incredible acting. I did as practice well. all morning, actually. That was genius. Well, if you think you can beat Dan, uh, and obviously you don't have the luxury of having an accent, uh, then uh, you know, give it a go. Stick your entry in the comment section down below. That was brilliant, mate. That really was inspired. 
We've got over 10k to go, actually. I'll just get my foot in, hold on, hold on. I'm in. Comment of the week now, and the two that we've chosen both came under the same video, and that was the Collar della Finestra Epic Climbs video, which Matt and Si did about a week ago. Now, they both centre around the same thing in the video, which we'll see very shortly. First one comes from Boxcarboy12. He said, 2 minutes 28, that was much better than normal. Looks like Matt's been practising clipping into his pedals. Yeah, and James Richards noticed exactly the same thing. He said, I think we have a new record for how fast Matt can clip in. Uh, and you're not wrong. But it has to be said, actually, that those were on both on the lower slopes of the climb as the altitude began to get to us both. Matt's missed the bus. Bloody hell! Come on, Matt, get on board! Struggling, as normal, to, to clip in. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't forget, we do take a look at all of the comments below our videos each week. So if any of you got anything particularly humorous, write it down. And you might well get comment of the week next week. We should probably leave the confines of your old team. Oh, already? Down, oh, I know, but you know, so we don't get any stories. We should probably leg it and. Uh, all right. Yeah. <sighs> Time now for cycling shorts, and we're going to begin by putting another one of our debates to rest. Who is the world's best all-round cyclist? Yeah, it is Pauline Ferrand Prevot. Now she might not have had the best season, by her standards at least, but given that she's just won the World Cross Country Mountain Bike Championships, she is now world champion in all three major disciplines, on the road, in cyclocross, and now mountain biking. Yeah, an absolutely incredible feat, I think you will all agree. Even that great Mariana Voss hasn't managed to achieve that so far in her career at least. So, best all-round cyclist, Pauline Ferron Prevot. Yeah. Now, another debate that we can put to rest is this one. Which one's your best? I'm guessing the right. <laughs> Here we go. For no reason. Guns of the peloton. Who has the biggest guns in the pro peloton? You thought it was John Degenkolb. Whoa! 34.4! There was still one person we had to measure. 28.4. I'm not the worst. Go on then. No, we've already done that, Dan. They were 30 centimetres. You know they were 30 centimetres. Yeah. Right, now the question on everyone's lips is, can anybody beat John Dagenkoll when it comes to the size of biceps? Andre, he's got 34.4 centimetres of biceps. We think that you are the man in the peloton who's probably going to beat him. So, can we measure your biceps? Ali. You need Come to tense. tense it. That's the wrong one. Um, okay, ah. good. It's the moment of truth. Tense it. John was very pleased with it's his... Not, uh, it's not... Oh, oh it's oh, getting bigger. Oh, 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 oh. 35 points. Oh, congratulations, Congratulations. Andre. Probably the biggest win of his season, I think. It's been a reasonably quiet week in terms of transfer news, but it has been quite a high-profile change in terms of one rider, and it's a big surprise to us, at least. Yeah, that's right. Friend of GCN and super talent, South African Louis Menkes will be leaving his current team, MTN Quebec, at the end of this season and moving over to Lampre Merida, where he'll join up with former world champion Rui Costa in making a pretty formidable GC duo. Yeah, it certainly didn't seem to be many people who were expecting this move, but he does have some links to the team Lamprey Merida in the form of their current manager, Brent Copeland. Now, Copeland was the manager at MTN back in 2013, and that was where Lewis started his professional career. Do you reckon he's left M10 Quebec because you nicked his wheels at the Tour de France? You ran off of them? Well, I had to give them back. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a sore subject. Sorry, mate. Win SIS products with GCN. Whoa! Amazing skills! Thanks. Right, it's time to announce the competition winners. Thanks to all of you who entered our competition last week to try and win a whole load of nutrition products from SIS. We've drawn five winners, and here they are. Here they are. Whoa! Matt Holland, Simon Colston, Deborah Luca, Brent Thumlett, and Harry Newton. Congratulations to all of you guys. Make sure that someone with some serious upper body strength is in to receive that delivery, because uh, it's going to wear a ton. Yeah, and if you didn't win this time, don't fear, because very soon we're going to have another amazing competition for you. This week's Tech of the Week comes from Sai, again, from Germany. Again. Yeah. Getting a little bit worried about my carbon footprint, but, you know, got to commute somehow, haven't you? 
tech of the week this week is Zips Tangente tyres. Now, the range has been around for a while, but they've just brought out a new model, and with it, they may well have created the fastest tyre around. So this one, the Speed, is their top model. It's only 216 grams, but the most important thing is that the rolling resistance is supposedly market leading. Now, they've only been able to test it against their existing tyres, and they found that it's 10 watts faster than their previous best, which was already pretty darn quick. And what they can't independently corroborate as yet, but it looks like it from the figures, is this, this could be significantly faster than even the benchmark tyre that most pros are riding. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Wow, some pretty impressive claims from them there. I'd actually quite like to see some more independent testing of the rolling resistance of various tyres, tubers as well, because essentially that would be some free gains for all of us in terms of speed. Well, not, not completely free, because you'd have to buy the tyres, but you know what I mean. Yeah, relatively inexpensive gains. We should give them to Matt to test with his internal power meter. It's pretty much bang on that. The current time trial champion, Lisa Brenau, put her skills to good use recently at the Bowls Women's Tour. She took the fourth stage of the six-day event, which was the time trial, and then went on to win the following day's road stage whilst wearing a leader's jersey, which she held on to through to the end of the race. Yeah, I tell you, another rider who's looking like she's sharpening up nicely for the World Championships is the Belgian champion, Jolien Dor. She won the first two stages of that race, taking her tally of UCI wins this year to 13. So things are looking pretty good for her. GCN's Epic Ride. It's time for GCN's Epic Rides. Now, unfortunately, we don't have Matt with us again, so Dan is going to get his guns out. Only 30 centimetres of diameter, but never mind. And I will do my best. London to Rome. 12 of us have ridden 1,900 kilometres. 13 days from London to Rome. For charity. <coughs> Over to you, mate. The second one comes in from Brandon Nairn, and he wrote, Did my first 200k ride with my mate last weekend. 3,000 meters of climb. And a few Strava comms. Uh, well done to both of you. I should put my sleeves back down now. If you want to get on GCN's Epic Rides, thanks, Sai, you can put the hashtag. GCN Epic Rides, and we'll find it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever it is, and you might be on the show next week. Ooh. Ooh. Yep, Don's chosen a couple of tweets for us this week, and the first, in fact, is a conversation between two teams currently at the Vuelta. Started by MTN Quebec, they wrote, hashtag LV2015, 88 k's to go, the break have 2 minutes 20, Movistar are chasing. Has someone told them that Astana are currently leading the race? To which Movistar then replied, we're aware guys, but good luck with Nat Nail's break though. I love it, competition, in the race, and on Twitter, hmm. that's what we like to see. Now, I think this one that Don picked out is really nice as well. Bit of a response to Oleg Tinkoff putting his foot in his mouth again this week from Dan Worry saying, even Oleg Tinkoff has got to agree that Pauline Ferrand Prevost is a badass. Current road, cyclocross, and mountain bike world champion. But we certainly think she's a badass. I should imagine Oleg will have to grudgingly admit that as well. Yeah. Staccato. Dare to weak for me. I see this Oleg Tinkoff. He does what he wants, doesn't he? Cannot, they cannot halt my tempo. So what's coming up on the channel this week? Well, on Wednesday, we're going to show you how to train with a heart rate monitor. An Ant Plus connected strap that will allow you to train with heart rate. On Thursday, we've got our top 10 cycling faces. You have to see what that one's all about. And on Friday, we've got some more GCN tips for you. This time, it's how to film your riding. Yeah, a good mount will really help, as will making sure it's attached really firmly. And while we don't use them here on GCN, we do really like those mounts that allow you to attach the camera underneath and then your Garmin on top. Matt, are you grimacing back there? Yeah, only a little bit. Can you do a bit more? I want this to look really dynamic. <laughs> yeah, Saturday, our pro bike is Pierre Alain's Colnago. Sunday is, of course, off the back. And then on Monday, well, we show you how to wear your cycling helmet 
like a pro. Yeah, but have you ever thought about the way you wear your helmet? The do's, the don'ts, the how-to's? Well, whether you have or you haven't, like it or not, here is GCN's guide on how to wear a helmet like a pro. Yeah, and then we'll let someone else tell you what's on the show again this time next week on Tuesday. Racing news now, we're going to crack on to start with with the Vuelta at Espana. Now, we're filming this on the Monday, and as things stand right now, just one second separates the top two on GC. They being Fabio Aru and Joachim Rodriguez. There's still a lot to play for going into the final week. Yeah, Rafa Maika of Tinkoff Saxo sits in third, and then, rather ominously, Tom de Moulin of Giant Alpacin is still potentially close enough to Aru and Rodriguez to think that he might be able to take that leader's jersey after the time trial. Yeah, probably worth mentioning Chavez as well. The young mm. Colombian, of course, took two stage in the first week, but he's still in fifth, which is a real breakthrough performance and a grand tour for him. Now, the race has been marred yet again by another incident involving a moto, this time with Sergio Paolino, again from the Tinkoff Saxo squad, and it has seemed to spark the organisers to take some course of action this time around. So they've told all the moto drivers they need to give the riders more space, so hopefully this will be the last incident of its kind that we see for the foreseeable future. Yeah, we have heard though from a DS on the race that there are an unbelievable number of motorbikes at this year's Vuelta. So maybe it is just a temporary measure and there is still a wider issue to be addressed. But before we leave the Vuelta, Dan, can I just say that I really, really hope Rodriguez wins. Like, I've got absolutely yeah. nothing against Aru. I can't wait till he wins his first Grand Tour. But this feels a little bit like... Rodriguez's last chance, and I yeah. think it would be great if he can get a Grand Tour in his Palmares. Yeah, he's a nice bloke to boot, which I think is why we want him to win. Now, it's probably caught your attention that despite the sunshine here, we are actually at the Tour of Britain, so probably a good time now to bring you up to speed on that. I don't think this has ever happened before, has nah. it, this sunshine? I'm in short sleeves and I'm not even cold. I, yeah, I figured I'd wear a jumper because it'll rain in a minute. But Now, Tour of Britain started on Sunday, the first stage won narrowly by Elia Viviani from Mark Cavendish. And stage two has just been won by uh, Peter Vakoc of uh, Etix Quickstep. Yeah, a fine solo victory for the new Czech champion. He went away with, what, 15 k's to go, held off a very star-studded group, which you can see coming across the line now. Pretty impressive ride, I think you have to say. Extremely impressive. Now, we have to go and catch up with some riders, so we will leave the GCN show there. But, of course, you have got Extreme Corner to look forward to. Check it out. That was pretty extreme. Now we need to go and find Andre Greipel to give him his prize for having the biggest biceps in the pro peloton. Uh, but what's, what can we throw to, Dan? Uh, well, we've got a large welter playlist now, haven't we? So you can find that by clicking just up there. Loads of videos for you all in one playlist. Yeah, or actually to see Matt perhaps clipping in in record time. Oh, yeah. Check out amazing. the uh, Colla della Finestra epic climb. You can get through to that just by clicking down there. Yeah, and if you would like to subscribe to the channel, it's absolutely free to the channel, I should say. And all you've got to do is do that is click on our fans. Here, look. Are you just fans of GCN? Yes. Yeah, you yeah. Fans. Just take subscribe. Fans. We watch Skipton it all the time. Club. Skipped and Cycling Club. Oh. Even got a plug in. Andre, just want to give you your prize for having the biggest biceps. Thank in you very Peloton. much. Really proud of it. Congratulations. Do you <laughs> Why you don't measure the legs? Well, that's next year, but would you would you like to nominate another rider to measure the biceps of and we'll go to them next? I think uh, Ian Stannard and Mark Rainshaw are okay. the next ones. Right. We're on it, we're on it. Thanks Andre. Good. Uh, Seabag, I think he also has quite a big biceps. So. Oh, okay. so. Right. Thank cool. you very much. Thanks, I always, really, mate. Uh, we'll enjoy it. You can measure directly. <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow.